welcome back to Freddy in the Shed. We're up in the radio shack. On this video, I want to explain to you the importance of owning and using a VNA Nano, that is a vector network analyzer. They've been out a while now, these meters. Originally, they came in a very nice metal case. They were quite expensive, and they still are, to be honest. They're about 160, 165 pounds if you want the top spec. I came into the market oh, a number of years ago now. I, I bought a slightly cheaper plastic cased meter, but it came with all of the accessories, which you do need all of the accessories. And yeah, that's very nice, and I can't remember what I paid, but currently now these are about £65, something like that. You might get it a little bit cheaper um, from a China deal, but about £60-odd. pounds. Now, I got in contact with Banggood a while ago, and uh, I said, I, I want something cheaper. I want something for CB prices, because when you're setting up CB, especially on a budget, you don't want to go spending loads and loads of money. And they came back with this one in a box, which was £37 when they sent it. I, I, it may have gone up a few quid, but I will link it in the, uh, in the description. I'll try and get a picture up on screen. Um, it's the same VNA uh, Nano. They've all been cloned, of course, from the original, much like radios. But what you've got here... It's a very bare bones system, and that's really all you need. If you're going to use this indoors in the shack, you're not going to take it out into the field, you don't need it to be waterproof. This basically 37 pounds is all you need. The little meter itself, like I say, completely cloned to death, but it should work. We'll find out in a moment. I mean, it really is um, as basic as it comes to be honest with you. It's not even got a plastic case. You've got a sandwiched affair here of um, three circuit balls. You can, you can even see the little lithium battery, but that's that's fine for as long as it works. I'm not really gonna be too worried about that. I'll make sure I won't uh, drop it. And yeah, all the controls are here. It, it works the same as my other meter. It's just not as fancy pantsy and it's cut right down to the bare bones. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is um, we'll zoom in and I'll show you how to set this meter up because there is a little bit of setting up to do before you can use it with your antenna. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, the first thing you're gonna to need to attach this to your CB antenna is a little pigtail adapter. It's got a 259 mal plug on the end and goes down to a mal SMA which will fit into the meter. It doesn't come provided with that. I believe I bought this one um, off Amazon and I think it was about five or six pounds. I think you can get them even cheaper if you go eBay China. But yeah, you will have to purchase an adapter. First thing you need to realize with the meter is there are two input channels. We're only gonna be using the top one because we're only interested in the reflected performance of the ad. Right, let's switch it on for the first time. I've not tested this, so I do hope it works. I should have tested it, really. Ah, oh, there you go. Right, so when it boots up, um, as you can see, there's a lot of information on the screen. Now, don't worry about this, because we're not gonna need any of this information. In a moment, we're gonna take this down to one trace. Basically, in a nutshell, you've got over here, you've got the two traces that have been allocated to this terminal, S1 or S11, and then you've got these two traces here which are on this terminal, channel one, S21. So the first thing we need to do is to remove all of these traces, we're not interested. All we want is an SWR trace. The unit comes with a little pointy pen there, and I certainly would recommend it because it's quite small. So clicking on this side of the screen brings up a menu. These are all of our options. We go to the top one, display, and then we want trace. So there we are, that's the four traces all shown on the screen. So we now want to remove three of them. We just, we'll just leave the yellow one as that's quite easy to see. Very easy to remove them. Just click on them twice and the trace disappears. And there we go. And we're now less left with the single yellow trace. All of the rest of the information has been removed. So now we have our single trace and that's right at the top of the uh, screen now. We now have to tell the meter what we want it to do because it's multifunctional. So we go back and then we go to format and then we choose SWR. So now it knows it's an SWR meter. However, it's not ready to go yet because it's completely wide field 
all the way across the radio spectrum. We need to zoom in to the frequencies that we want to use. So to do that we click on the menu there, we go back and then back again and this time we go to one called stimulus. We click on that. And this is where we're going to set the frequencies we want to monitor. For this particular example uh, I'm going to do it over 11 meters. So we, to do this we press start and we're going to enter in the frequency we'd like to start. So let's go right down. So let's go 27 and then M there for megahertz. And then once again, stop. Um, let's go a little bit into the 10 meter band and see how my SWR is there. So we'll stop at 28.5. Oh, didn't work, did it? 28.5 megahertz. And there we go. And that'll be a much tighter scale. In the box, you'll find a little packet and you've got three of these brass caps. They do look the same, but they are in fact different because what we need to do now, we need to calibrate the meter. Uh, we need to do this pretty much every time that we start the meter up and use it if we want it to be accurate. But it's quite easy to do, but just make sure that you don't lose these little caps because without these, you really can't use the meter. Once in the menus again, we want to go back and this time we want to go to calibrate. And then we want to go to calibrate just there. So you see on, on the list here, we've got open, short, load, and then through, and then done. As we're only doing the reflected part of the antenna, we're only interested in open, short, and load. That's all we need to do. Now, if you look very closely, let me zoom out. If you look very closely at these little caps, and I'm gonna try not to drop them, it's a bit awkward. So I don't want to get in way of the camera, but okay. Also comes with a little barrel connector there. We'll, we'll save that. So when you look at these caps, and it might be a little bit difficult to show you on camera, but they're all different. For example, this one you can see there's nothing in it. So that is your open cap. This one has an insulator. In the, uh, in the end there, much like a piece of coaxial cable. That is your load cap, that is a dummy load. And then this one has just a pin going to a brass collar, and that is the short, that is a dead short. So first we take off the little red protective cover on the connector. It's quite nice, it comes with that, to be honest, at this price. And then the first one we want to do is the open. So we select the open cap, simply screw that on, and then take a little pen there and just clip, click, open. And a tick comes up on the screen. That's done. The next one, which has now gone grey, is telling us we need to put the short cap on. So that's the one that's all brass and is just basically a direct short. Don't worry if anything comes up at the screen at this point, we're not really interested in that. So then we can go ahead and click short. And then finally, we have load. click on load. That's it. Now all three of those are now ticked. We're not interested in doing it anymore. And then to finish we clicked click done. You can save these parameters if you like, um, which I would recommend pretty much doing this process every time. It doesn't hurt. I mean you can just click it as save one if you want to. That's up to you. Right, we're going to put these very carefully back in the uh, in the bag so we don't lose them. So we're now ready to connect up to the meter. When I connect this, what I should hopefully see is the yellow line that swerves down now. And where it goes at the bottom of the trough, that will be my lowest SWR point. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 
Okie dokie, so this is my SWR reading all the way from 25.9 megahertz all the way into the 10 meter band, 28.5. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see in more detail. Right, I've turned the shack lights off, it might make it a little bit easier. Right, so what you can see on the scale there is that where it's got that little uh, number one, that is telling you where the pointer is, obviously. And then on top of the meter, you've got a little rocker switch here by this flashing green LED. And all you need to do is just rock that down. And you can see that that's telling me indicator one. And if you look at the frequency display there, that's the frequency that I'm tuning to. And then over, over here, hopefully you can see that, that is my SWR. So let me take this down. Um, okay, well that's not too. Bad. So I tell you what I'll do. Look, let's go to twenty nine. So twenty seven point nine, which is on the eleven meter FM band, which my antenna isn't tuned to. But you can see I've got an SWR there of one point three seven. So that's perfectly acceptable. And my lowest SWR is just down here. So what we're going to do is just go all the way down there. There you go. And at 27.252, my SWR is at its lowest at 1.17. And when I tuned the antenna a few years ago, I tuned it to 27305. There you go, so 27304. So at 27305, it is at 1.17. One eight, so one to one, one point two, which is perfectly acceptable. As we move away from the eleven meter band and we go up here, you can see how my SWR starts climbing very, very high. And by the time that we get to um, twenty six megahertz, we are into SWR of two, and yeah, it will eventually go over three, which comes dangerous. Now, when you connect your antenna, if, for example, you just saw a flat line, that's an indication that you're going to have, you've got a coaxial problem. You, you've got some kind of a short. If you're not seeing a curve of a, the tuning of the antenna, it could be a coaxial issue. It could even be you've got a bad antenna because they do ship bad antennas with, inter, with internal problems. And this meter will be able to pick it up. Other than checking your current setup to find out where you're lowest SWR is or maybe being sent a rogue antenna which has happened to me and you're sure it just won't tune you can test it with this meter other than that if you're into experimenting and just basically putting up pieces of long wire in your garden and just wondering what they'll pick up which is it's a great hobby of shortwave radio listening if you're into that making your own antennas this is invaluable because it just takes all of the guesswork out of it. You set up an antenna, you connect this meter, it'll tell you exactly where that antenna is resonating. You can make it shorter, make it longer, put a bend in it, maybe put a ballon in it. Try and get it to tune to the frequency that you want. So for that, it's absolutely invaluable. And I'm, I'm really pleased that these have come down to an affordable level. Uh, £40 is quite remarkable, really. I got this from Banggood. They sent it in free of charge. I've tried, I tried to make an, uh, an honest review. I, ha I have checked. Um, these are a little bit more expensive on Amazon. You, yeah, okay, you can get them on eBay for about the same price, but eBay is a minefield at the moment. So I'll leave a link to this in the description from Banggood. As I say, it's around £40, something like that. It depends on the exchange rate. Um, I'm not on any commission from Banggood. They do send these things in free of charge, and I do thank them for that. But I try and make it as honest as I can, I don't get any kickbacks. So there it is, the Nano VNA Vector Network Analyzer, checking your antenna, making antennas, enjoying yourself, experimenting with pieces of wire. That's the end of the video then. There is the thumbs up from Fred in the Shed. I hope this has been useful to you. If so, just give me the thumbs up down below before you go. Subscribe for more things like this in the future. But as for now, as always, please, please, please stay safe, look after each other, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.